Oh, also, you can get my face on a t-shirt now. Look at that. Who wouldn't want to wear my face on a t-shirt? Also, I keep looking at this screen and not you guys, I'm sorry. Hi, everyone. What's up, everyone? Fish Shop Matt here. Now, tons of you on the channel have been asking about the Fluval Sienna. Now, obviously you've all seen, well, most of you have probably seen it. If not, where have you been? But over on MD Fish Tank's channel, we've done the setup of this. So we've got the 100p puffer aquarium. But loads of you have asked for a bit more of an in-depth look on what's going on with the kit and what you get with the tank and how it all works together. So I thought I'd run through tonight. Well, if I say tonight, it's after work. So tonight, thought I'd run through what you get, how you get it and what's going on with the tank. So uh, let's quickly go through, show you what's going on with this new Fluval Sienna. So when it comes to sizing on the Fluval Sienna, there's two sizes in the UK. There is three sizes, I believe, in Europe. So Europe has a 160 litre, which is like a cube version. Um, but the UK, we have the 270 litre, but I think it's 272, but yeah, the 270 litre, and we have the 330 litre, which is this one here. Now I'll pop the sizes up on the screen, because Fluval have been quite clever. They've sort of made them a little bit, um, not as long, a little bit shorter, that's the word. So they've made them a little bit shorter, but they've gone really deep front to back and up to, and um, bottom to top, which is really nice. It gives you a, a bit more scope to mess around with the scape on them. So yeah, really, really smart in the way that they've designed them sizing wise. Now within those sizes, you've got three main colors. You've got a black, a white, you know, no explanation needed there, black, white, or you get this really cool one that we've got here, which is like their concrete, I think they call it. But yeah, really, really nice. Um, this is probably my favorite. And then the tank, you get this polished like aluminium frame that goes around the aquarium. So that's like a trim that goes around the bottom. Um, and that's the same on all three colors. You get the polished aluminium with then the different colored cabinets. Now I know lots of people have been asking from all sort of parts of the world as to when these are gonna be available. So I have asked the question to Fluval. I do believe they're gonna be available in America and at some point soon. They were first released months and months ago in Europe. Then they sort of gradually and got, well, they gradually got to the UK. So we've only just received them in the UK um, in the last week. And that is only Fluval premium dealers as well. So you've got to, yeah, you've got to find out which stores have got them. But yeah, only Fluval premium dealers in the UK have got them. I think in December, they get a full release in the UK. And then at some point later, they're gonna be released into America, I believe. But for everyone watching from America, just go and bombard Fluval's, you know, social media or, you know, email address, just go bombard it and keep telling them that you need Sienna in America because then they'll, then they'll get it over to you. Now, during this video, obviously it's after hours, so the lights might dim and I might need to mess around with the lighting because it is all set up on the app to control itself. So we'll see how that goes, but let's run through and let's show you what you get with the tank. There you go, see, I knew it was gonna do it. Because these lights are on the timer, I've just had to turn them all up. So the, the aquarium's just gone full brightness. So this is like midday lighting at the moment. Um, so yeah, you might see a bit of continuity error, but that is just because the lights started dimming ready for them to go to bed. But let's start at the bottom, start in the cabinet, and then we'll work all the way up through and we'll end on the lighting because the lighting's probably the most complicated bit. So uh, yeah, let's go through it. Sorry for any shaky hands because in all honesty, it's been a very, very long day in the shop. Um, and yeah, it's been been one of those days. So when you open up the cabinet, um, it's a really nice design inside. Obviously, you can see you've got a little basket on the side to pop all your bits and pieces in. You've then got a net hook on this side. That might be the uh, banners so that I can steal the information as I'm doing this review. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you've got a net hook, a little easy shelf. So if you're doing planting, you can pop your bits and pieces up on there. Um, and then you've got a rubber mat that the filter sits on. So that's a bit of like a, a sound deadening mat, I suppose. It sort of helps with a little bit of sound deadening and also helps if you spill any water. It's not going to get onto the uh, cabinet and ruin the cabinet. Um, so yeah, really, really nice, really, really simple. When we built the cabinet, it was really simple. You know, you have got a very quick build because you've just got, you know, side panels, back panel, middle panel, side panel, top and bottom. It all bolts together or screws together really, really easily. Really, really nice, simple design that took us probably, you know, even with MD's help, and he was more of a hindrance than a help, it probably took us about an hour to build it. 
Now one little nice touch in here, now sorry if it gets a little bit echoey, is this little bolt here. Now there's loads of these, so you've got them in there. Uh, you can see one around here as well. Now what those are is it's for leveling. So what you can do is you can get it on your floor and then you can level it up. So all you need to do is pop an Allen key into those bolts, tighten it or loosen it depending, and that will raise and lower the whole aquarium so that it makes sure that you can get a nice level playing field for when you set your aquarium up. So yeah, like I said, Fluval have thought of a lot of things with these nice little touches for putting your basket there so you can put your me uh, media, well you could put media I suppose, but we've got uh, dechlorinator and bacterial booster and flakes and things in there. Um, but yeah, they've thought about a lot of different things when it comes to this aquarium. Now, the filter that comes with this aquarium, it'll be on the 330, it's the Fluval 407. On the 270, you're obviously going to get the 307, but they are nice, solid filters. I haven't actually done a review on one of these filters yet. I don't have one at home, but I do have a new 300 litre aquarium. Oh, no, sorry, I tell a lie. It's not new, but it's going to have a new scape done to it soon, which I think I'm going to get a fluval because I used to run them years and years ago. I haven't ran one in a little while, so I think it'd be nice to sort of, yeah reconnect I suppose with the fluval range but these filters are really really nice you've got your priming button up on top the grey one stops the flow of water the red one unlocks your pipe work and they are really quiet really nice simple filters so yeah you can't go wrong with a fluval external they are really really quality so for anyone wondering I thought I'd just show you quickly on the back of the box as to what comes with the filter and how it sort of quickly works. I'm not going to strip down this filter in here because in all honesty I want something to eat in a minute and I can't be bothered to clean a filter out at 8 o'clock at night or whatever it is now. Um, but yeah this is the 407 so you can see it comes with the four baskets. On the 307 I think it comes with one less basket, shorter foams I think and a um, smaller motor obviously it's a little bit slower but this is the media you get with it, it obviously comes down through you've got your priming pump and your uh, auto stop or water stop valve at the top comes down through your sponges here this here is like a bio sponge and then it comes back up through these baskets here into your filter now you do get everything you need if i show you there with it now if you buy this filter with this tank you will not be getting that because none of that pipe work is necessary, obviously, for what you're doing. But you do get all the other bits. You get carbon, you get biomedia, the bio sponges. And yeah, you get everything that you need to run it. Obviously, like I say, this pipe work here won't come with this one because it will be for the tank and it will have the drilled pipe work. And then Fluvo obviously do the whole range of different medias. You know, they do lots and lots of different carbons, ammonia removers, phosphate removers, nitrate removers so on and so on and so on they do loads of different medias pretty much for any problem so yeah that's the filter you get with the bigger one like i say the 20 no sorry the 307 is what you get with the uh with the slightly smaller one you know good guarantees on them decent filters really quiet running yeah i really can't fault fluval filters you know they have been doing it a long time they have perfected the art of it i would say now I won't go too much into the filter in this video because I'll do another video where we go a bit more in depth because otherwise it's just going to be a review on every single part of this tank. But this one work, or these tanks work a little bit differently to your standard external filters. Um, and that is that they have a drilled base with the hose tails going through the bottom of the aquarium. Now Fluval do this on most of their larger aquariums now. So their whole shaker range has a drilled base on it. So the pipe work comes up through the bottom. Um, and the bigger Roma, the Roma 240 has a drilled base, the Vicenza, the Venezia, if they still do them, which is the bow front and the corner tank. All of the bigger tanks generally have a drilled base to them, which makes plumbing in the filter and actually um, priming the filter much, much easier because obviously the water comes straight out. Oops, sorry. There we go. The water comes straight out from the pipes here, straight down through. There's no sort of up and over and messing around straight down into your filter. So the priming takes seconds in all honesty it's really really nice and simple so i know a few of you would be like oh drilled base like that means there's two holes in the bottom of my aquarium you know how does water not leak everywhere and sort of dribble everywhere this is the kit you get to sort of plumb through the bottom of the aquarium on the fluval bigger tanks so what you've got is these two here are exactly the same with these two nuts now these push through the base of the aquarium and what you've got is you've just got two seal rings there with the thread. So that pushes through the base of the aquarium. 
You then tighten the nut up against that one. That pulls all of that flush through the bottom of the tank because there's plastic tank connectors. Not that you can see them, but there's plastic tank connectors up in under there. And once you push them through and that's tightened up, those two seal rings seal off all the water and you won't get any water through. Then all you've got, a strainer. So that goes on the top of one to stop any fish getting down into your filter. And then you've got this one. This one actually comes, I believe, as two parts normally. So what you've got is you've got a double nozzle there that you can angle and move around the aquarium. And then this is your upstand. So that allows the uh, water flow to be a little bit higher than your inlet, meaning that the filter's a little bit easier. Now, obviously I haven't taken this off of this one. I've just taken those off of another tank just to show you. But it's such a simple design and so, yeah, really easy to set up. And in the like 15, 16 years of working in the store, I've never ever had one of these leak. So, you know, don't worry about it. There's not a problem with them. Drilling holes in the bottoms of tanks is completely normal. Quickly before I move on as well, Fluval do give you all of these parts. So if you do ever need to lock off the water and stop the water coming down from your aquarium, down into the cupboard, what you can do is you can use these here to cap off, you know, the little red stoppers go into the pipework and you can block off a lot of the water. I'd still probably put a towel underneath but and drain the tank down a little bit, but it does mean if you ever need to do anything major to the tank and you want to lock off those filter for any reason and you wanna, you know, change over the pipework or anything, you can do with those bits that do get sent with the tank. So like I say, that's about it. I can stay on the bottom of the tank. Really smart, really nice shelf, hook, basket, super duper, black, white, concrete, gray. Now onto the cool bit. So moving on to the aquarium, they have used really thick glass. So they've used like 10 mil glass on this tank. So it's really thick, really heavy duty glass, which is really, really nice. They've also polished all the edges. Now I'm not too sure if I'm gonna be able to get it, but this edge here is like polished into like a little uh, rounded sort of bevel, which is really smart. There you go, you can sort of see it on the end there. So it's just all really rounded, all really nice, all really sleek. Obviously, like I said previously, you've got these polished top rim and the polished bottom rim. It's getting a bit dark in here now, so sorry. Uh, I should have brought a light with me, but we've done the cabinet anyway. We know what that looks like. But yeah, really nice polished top edge and bottom edge, which just sort of sets off the tank and gives it a real nice modern look. So when I was talking earlier, you can see our... Um, filter inlet there so that's our inlet blasting water off down the aquarium and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it we've obviously planted a lot of crypt in front of it somewhere in there in behind those Danios, you can see a black mark that is the little filter inlet so like I say once you get those plants in there you can hardly see the filter inlet at all especially when you've got a light from the aquariums behind you showing it off so yeah, once you get all your plants in the background, those filter pipes sort of just blend in really, really nicely and they're almost impossible to sort of see. They just settle into the tank. Now you can see we've set our heater. Now what you get is a mirrored heater with this filter. So you get the M series heaters, which are a shiny chrome heater. But the nice thing is they actually reflect all the colors in the tank. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to sort of spot it. There's the heater there. But because they're such a shiny coloration, they reflect all the colors in the tank. And again, they sort of blend in and you don't really tend to see them. Obviously you can see this end here where there's very little plants in the way, but the rest of it, there is gaps here and you can just see a bit of a shine, but it does blend in really, really nicely with the tank. Solid heaters, I've used them for years, really can't go far wrong with them. Now, as I was saying earlier, this is the 330 liter version. They do also do a 270. So this one is 110 centimeters long and then 55 centimeters front to back here and 55 centimeters top to bottom. The 270 is exactly the same width and depth. So you've got that 55, 55. I'll make sure I put inches on the screen for anyone who wants to use them. Um, but the difference is you've only got, hang on a minute. 90 centimeters <laughs> so the 270 is only 90 centimeters long so you've just got that little bit shorter so you're looking about there um and you say it gives you a little bit more scope but i do like this sort of wider tank like you can see the scape we've got going excuse the clarity of the water this bog wood obviously wasn't completely 
tanninless <laughs> when we went in so it has tanned the water a little bit but we have got some carbon and some bits and pieces running on that to try and get it but with this depth that you've got here it's just so much more scope to scape and to build a, an awesome sort of so I'm going to say it normally people sort of look at me a bit weird when I say it but I find deeper tanks they're more three-dimensional it sounds stupid because everything in there is three-dimensional but when you've got a deeper tank the fish sort of swim back and forth and end to end whereas when you've got a shallower tank you know they do just go up and down which suits some species but i do like having this depth it's really really smart and it just gives you a lot more scope now going up above the aquarium i'll start with the two sort of non-significant things i suppose you would say but you've got these two um they're called they call them alu bond which i'm assuming means when you open them up You've got like a little sheet of plastic in the middle with two sheets of aluminium either side. So yeah, really strong, really heavy duty lids. Like they don't bend, they don't twist. There's no plastic. Even when you take them off, actually, they hold their shape. They're solid. Really, really, yeah, really good quality lids. So they ain't going anywhere. So you get two of them. Obviously, as I showed, they just lift off and they slide either way. You've then got a vent hole, which obviously allows for a bit of gas exchange. You can also pop that one out. This normally disappears when I do this. There we go, that was all right. Um, so yeah, you have got that, which I was thinking would be nice. And I don't know if Fluval have done it for this reason, but would be nice to sit a little um, automatic feeder on top. So you could fit one of their little automatic feeders just there and it would drop the food through the hole rather than having to have your lid sort of partially open and it strapped onto the side, that would be a really nice little touch for that. So yeah, that would be quite cool being able to do that. Um, and yeah, same at this end. So you've just got another one which is slightly smaller. That slides in underneath the other one. Nice little bit of Fluval laser etching logo there, which is quite cool. Um, and yeah, really smart, really nice. Again, solid lids. So they ain't going anywhere and you could probably get your cat jumping on top of that and it ain't gonna drop in, which is always a nice thing. So I'm not too sure where this bit is gonna actually go in the video, but I thought, uh, I think it was one thing that I might've missed. So I was just gonna show you inside the lid. So what you've got is you've got a glass rim front and back. I'm assuming that is just for strength on the glass because it sort of ends at the end. So I'm just assuming that's for that. If not, it's a great little shelf to put things on, I'm not sure. Um, and then these are your two lighting bars. Um, so yeah, they sit, if I can see, on these little plastic runners. So you can slide them and they just sort of clip in there. So yeah, really smart little design and you can lift them out, you can slide them both to the back. And then the other thing that I thought I'd show is obviously the whole lid lifts off. So then you can get right in to the top of the aquarium, move all the lights out the way and it makes maintenance so much easier. So yeah, if this bit seems a little bit disjointed, Probably because it is, because it's like really dark and uh, ready to go home. So yeah, just thought I'd show you that quickly. Last little thing that I'll show you that's not insignificant is this little chappy here. Now, we, uh, this is a, oh, I can't see the branding on it. There we go. So it's a Fluval block. Now, I'll be honest, Fluval, we couldn't find this in the instructions anywhere. And me, MD and Martin were looking for ages as to what this little thing done um it's great it says it on your point of sale over there oh, excuse the systems just had a fish delivery in so just treated all of those guys it does say it on the uh instructions on the sorry on the point of sale there it does say what this is but this is a little cable tidy i've just talked about a cable tidy for a minute um yeah all you do is where your cables come out of the back corner this one sits over the top and just means that they loop over really nicely rather than having a mess of cables sort of hanging out the top. So if you move that, where these have been held in place, obviously you've got all these loose cables. So they're sort of bent into shape now, but when you first put them in, that just holds it all down, sends it down the back, away you go. Uh, one thing I probably should mention actually, with this, we've actually put another fluval light behind this tank uplighting the back rather than putting a black background or a blue background on it we just thought it was nice to be able to see that sort of concrete plinth that we made for it just see that through the tank so yeah that's why it's quite bright at the back now the last major thing to go through i suppose is the lighting which i'm going to set the camera up on a tripod i'll show you the app and i'll show you how it all works ah <sighs> so i've just recorded 
pretty much all of this without the mic. So I think the sound quality is going to be awful. So I'm going to go through it again. Hopefully I can remember it all this time. Um, so what you've got, two light units on the tank. You've got two, um, obviously dependent on the tank, depending on the size, but you've got two light bars in here. Both of them have two rows of LEDs. Now those LEDs have the Fluval Plant 3.0 technology in them, which I can only assume means that you can run them off the app, which is the Fluval app. And you can also, um, and they're probably the same LEDs that they run in their Fluval Plant 3.0s. Now those Plant 3.0s are great lights. Um, if you have seen the, um, oh, what tank was that? The Oak, 110 centimeter Oak Aquarium that we've done with the 150 or 200 green neons, whatever it was on MD Fish Tanks channel, that's got one of the Fluval Plant 3.0 lights above it. And they are just astounding. They're really, really good quality. So yeah, these have got that technology. And now the Fluval Plant 3.0 has three rows of LEDs. This one or these ones only have two, but you've got two of them. So in theory, you've got four rows of LEDs. Now, the reason they've probably done that is because of the depth of the aquarium. With that 55 centimeter depth, you need the light right the way across the aquarium. Now, what I'll do is I'll screen record on my phone so that you can see how the lighting works. I'm hoping that I can overlay that over my face here and you can see what I'm doing on the app as I go through it. Now, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna turn the backlight off and you'll just see how dark it is with only one of the light bars working, like so. So you can see that now that wood at the back is not really illuminated very well. And what I'll do is I'll connect to the other one and then we'll start recording and showing you how all the lighting works. Perfect. So I've connected to the other one. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit screen record on my phone. Hopefully, fingers crossed, that'll mean that you can see as I'm going through it and I can overlay the video. I'm not sure I'm that clever on video editing yet, but we will see. So as you can see now, you've got, this is the main screen. So man at the top, that means manual. Um, obviously you can see we've got it labeled as Sienna. Now, what you've got is you've got your five color channels that you can see, your pink, your blue, your cold white, pure white, and then your warm white. Across the bottom, you can see P1, P2, P3, P4. Those are all your um, channels that you can set up and have it running. So if I go through all the color channels, if I drop all of these lighting colors down, so just leave one, so there you go. So that's fully on pink now. You can see how, um, yeah, how pink that is. So it's quite a cool color, probably um, quite good for plant growth and yeah, plant colorations. I've always liked running the pink because you find that a lot of the fish pop with it. I always like that ready pink glow to them. And you can get a really cool, when you mix it with the white, you can get a really cool sort of sunset vibe or sunny, like sort of sunny river vibe, which is really, really cool. Next coloration up, you have got blue. Now, a lot of people like running this as a moonlight or a sort of, yeah, as a nightlight on their aquarium. Uh, you do have to be careful with blue light. I find that it can promote a bit of algae in freshwater aquariums when people are using it too long. Um, some people leave it on all night on the blue light. So yeah, I think that's where the problem comes from is a lot of people end up leaving it on for hours on end on this like night light mode. And then all of a sudden you've just got algae everywhere because you're giving it 24 seven of blue light. But it is a really nice light to have if you're watching a film or something and you sat in front of your TV and you don't want your tank to be blindingly bright, but you still want a little bit of light there. This one's probably a good setting to have it on so that you can just have that sort of dim light and your fish can still see what you're doing. You're, you can see what your fish are doing, but it's not blinding. Then obviously after that one, you've got your three whites. So you've got your cold white, um, which is just sort of a, a dull white. You've then got your pure white, which is the brightest one. And then you've got your warm white at the bottom, which is that sort of orangey sunsetty glow, which I quite like. And again, mix that one with the pink and you get this really cool like burnt orange sunset glow. So I really, really like that one. That's probably one of my favorite colors in the, on the uh, app. Now with them across the bottom, as I was saying, you've got P1 to four. Now all of these guys are literally just pre, uh, not preset at all. They're programmable channels that you can set up yourself. So what you do is you set your color channel. Let's say we wanted a, a channel that's 100% white. You hold down your program. So I'm holding down program three. You can see all the different colored rings have gone and it's just left the yellow one. And that is now set to that. As you can see, we've set different ones on P2 and P1. So if I set it to P2, that's the coloration set on P2. It's a little bit more blue on P1. And then on P4, it's super, super bright and everything's turned up to maximum. At the bottom, you've just got an on and off button. I'm not gonna press it now because it'll freak everyone. Oh, it's gonna go off anyway because I'm gonna go onto manual, um, onto auto. So if I turn it off now, there you go, turns it all off. Now, when you go over to auto, 
This is an automatic channel that turns it on at six o'clock in the morning, turns it off at six o'clock at night. Probably a little bit too long for most people's tanks to have lighting. You know, you probably will get a little bit of algae from that. Again, have enough plants and enough cleanup crew, you'll be okay. But this one is just literally automatic. If you set it to that, it is just gonna turn on at six, turn off at six, job done. Now you have got export, save and preview. Obviously preview just shows you your lighting rig just on a quick time. So if I press play, you can see if I fast forward it a little bit, it'll go through and it just shows you what your lighting is gonna do over that time. If I press stop on that now, you then have export. These have some presets in them, Tropical River, Lake Malawi planted. And if you export them, it changes all the coloration to what Fluval have essentially set it to in different ones. So yeah, you've got a load of, a few different settings that you can mess around with. Now, most of the time, I like running mine on Pro. The reason for this is you can mess around with the lighting to your heart's content, really. Now, I can see that someone has messed with this one already because this has changed from the last time I've seen it. Obviously, this one being in the shop, it does get messed around with by the staff and by customers a little bit just because you know we're playing with it we're showing customers how it all works so yeah you can see these are a little bit off and all the yellow is set to nothing at the moment but with the pro mode what you've got again you've got export so you can bring in any of those colored um sort of presets you've then got save as which does what it says on the tin preview does what it says on the tin edit takes you into this mental screen now this screen is probably the sort of the trickiest one to get your head around, but it is quite easy once you do. So you can see I've just gone from six o'clock when the sunrise will start to seven o'clock there. If you scoop that one, oh dear, I pressed the wrong one. Let's go back. So you can see that one there. Let's set that one back to six o'clock. Click on this one. So that one's set to seven. Let's try again, take two. So if I wanted to move this one and I wanted my sunrise to be longer, you could set that one so that it doesn't start or it doesn't end up on its highest setting until nine o'clock. And then all you do is on these color channels, you can change these around. So I could set that one down there, go to the next color channel. I could bring that one down to there and you can go through and set each one to what colors fix your or suit your aquarium. Now, once you've done that with all the different color uh, channels and once you've done that with all the different times, you just literally click save and it saves it and it's done and it keeps on going until you get essentially a power cut or you turn it off. If you do, you just reconnect it with your phone, go on to pro mode and it will remember your times, remember your settings and off it goes again. And that is the simplest thing with the lighting. It is probably my favorite lighting setup. It's really simple to use once you get used to it. And it's probably the best on the market, if I'm honest, for the price point they get at. You know, Fluval don't have many competitors, I would say, in that price point. It's sort of not not high end. It's not sort of Chihiros level, but it's above a lot of the sort of lower grade lighting on the market. So, yeah, these lights are fantastic for what they do. So there we go. I think that's everything you need to know or, yeah, should know on the Fluval Sienna. They are... For what you get with them, they are brilliant tanks. I can't fault them. There's nothing really on them that I can sort of take offense to or have a problem with. Fluval have been doing this sort of thing for quite a while now and every time they just upgrade the technology. You know, the Fluval lights have now got the app and the filters have got better and better and they have silencing feet and so on and so on. So there's not really anything bad that I can pick out on it at this precise moment. If I think of anything, I'll drop it in the comments, but Really, uh, you know, they're nice tanks and I can't go far wrong with them. Like I said, they have only just dropped in the UK. So if you're looking for one, you will have to find a Fluval Premium dealer. I believe there's quite a few of them based across the country. So you'll just have to drop onto Fluval's website, look at the premium dealership and see where you're going. Obviously, if you're in Europe, in theory, you'll have had these tanks since last, well, I don't know when, a fair few months ago. You'll know about them. You'll have seen them on a few websites, fingers crossed. Um, yeah and you can get them from there. As for America, I'm not too sure when you're getting it, sorry. Um, and probably Australia as well and all the rest of the world. I'm not sure when you're getting it. I can't be sure. I've obviously asked our, or my friends over in the, the UK as to what's going on with it, but yeah, they're not 100% sure. But in theory, it's come from Germany, where it started, I think, into Europe, 
and now it's into England. So in theory, it's just getting bigger and bigger. So hopefully Fluval Sienna will be worldwide at some point. If not, just keep bombarding Fluval with emails and messages and hopefully they'll uh, sort it out. So I think that's it for the minute. Hope you've enjoyed it. Obviously, remember, you can go and buy my face on a T-shirt. No, don't, don't, don't go buy my face on a T-shirt. Uh, until next time, I'm going to uh, pack up and go home. Peace.